can't just come yeah. out with yes. the, out the gate yes. just randomly. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's how. See, you got to wake these bitches up because they be napping. They clicked on a link. I'm sure they're not <laughs> napping yet. See, I was. See, like, you got to wait till we're 30 minutes in, then just randomly <laughs> scream expletives. This isn't the surprise them. symphony of podcasts. I wouldn't do that to people. But I, I do think it would be really funny. Like, my dream, my only dream with this podcast is that we're saying something really obscene on it, and someone is listening to us with the windows down in traffic, and then someone just hears, like, punani tight, and it's just, like, blasting across four lanes. That's my dream. I don't care who listens to us. I don't care if the podcast ever takes off. This is my all that I want. Colin. That means you have to start listening to us when you're driving and not just at home diddling yourself. <laughs> Actually choked. Colin, go up Queen Anne Hill. I have very specific instructions. Up Queen Anne Hill by the spot where all the tourists take the photos in front of that nice Victorian house with the park there and all, you know, all the people who are still wearing masks, the very sickly looking tourists, and just lower the windows and, you know, blast us saying like, like, Pussy, 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 or something like that. <laughs> like Trump 2028, like something, just to, you know. Although he does have a newer car, and I don't want, some, I don't want his car to get damaged. But still, I think it'd be funny. So. Did we have topics to talk about? <laughs> oh, I sent you some things. See, here's the problem. Too many things have been happening, and on the same side of the token, we have had a lot of, like, it's like the Squidward pin of like, I really wish I wasn't living through historic events right now. Pen. I've been I've been very busy today. I apologize. Well, really quickly, I, I have a couple things that you know I can pick up with you, but really quickly, we did we missed Indictment Day. I think our last podcast oh, yeah. we recorded before or before that they actually put him in the paddy wagon or something like that. And you're gonna have to talk on that because I I've been doing other things that I have not even watched any of the response or his speech because I know you said he, you know, he, yeah, he, I'll, I'll he let went, you talk about it. He yeah. went and did his song and dance. But the the core thing from Indictment Day, which which even, you know, even his detractors had to begrudgingly give him, is right after the indictment, he went to Versailles Restaurant in Miami, which is the most famous Cuban restaurant. Like, they have the, the, the really good coffee and the pastries and all that stuff. And you know how we know it's famous? It was on Real Housewives of Miami at least twice. <laughs> yes, yes. And so he rolls up, and it, it, it was this fantastic, like, like, sort of, like, buffet of events that happened. He rolls up, he says, free food for everyone, and so his aides immediately start buying food, which the New York Post was later like, some people went and did not get their food paid for, but he did say free food for everybody, and they rang up a bunch of food, so I don't know, someone else's problem. But, you know, that's the DeSantis Post. Um, or the Murdoch Post, I don't know what you want to call it. I don't watch Succession. And then he goes in there, and they start singing happy birthday to him. Like all the Cubans at Versailles in the middle of the day on like a, what was it, like a Tuesday or Thursday? Way to bury the lead though. What? He was arraigned on his birthday? Day before. Oh. Okay. Day before. He Still. goes in, they sing happy birthday to him, and then these random faith leaders come out and start praying on him. And there's a Jew, and there's a Christian, and there's a whole mix of, like there's a guy with a yarmulke, and there's a whole, like the whole village people of religious leaders were there. <laughs> And they prayed with him, and he's like, you know, he's like, oh, good, thank you, thank you. And then he walks out, and they're like, we love you. And it was the best thing, because every network that was carrying the indictment live, like it was the arrest of Paris Hilton, all had to cut to Versailles, and where he was saying, and see, and he's cheering, and I mean, whoever on his team suggested that was very smart, although he might have, but whoever thought that up was brilliant. Because... Even Jake Tapper, there's a clip of him on CNN being like, well, we don't need to show this anymore. We can cut away or something. But it's after they've already shown him in there and there's an adoring crowd. You know, look, you've got, you've got DeSantis walking into a room, people introducing themselves and him looking at him and saying, looking them not in the eyes saying, yes. And then you've got Trump with like a bunch of Cubans doing like the Latinos poor Trump. Like, that's the difference. With him, you get the full mariachi. Oh, and there was also that other clip of, um, and I'm not sure when it was, but it was going around Twitter. I'm assuming it was recent. The clip with the young black man who um, had a 
I'm going to say a sports ball because I don't remember if it was a football or a baseball, but he had some type of sports ball. Okay. And he, he walked up and was like, oh, President Trump, will you please sign this? And like Trump like hugged this little black kid and the kid, the kid looked really like enthusiastic to that see. That looked like that was the best see, day of that kid's life. Which is really great to see. Like, like this black mother who I believe, um, she looked like a, she, she looked like she would be a single black mother. I don't mean, I don't mean this in a racist way, please. You understand what I'm saying. She looked like, I'm so proud of this boy. He yes. is my own, he is my pride and joy. My only thing in life that I've worked so hard to help raise. Yes. And she apparently does, has done a good job. It was just, it was a wholesome thing to see. That was that yeah. clip that, that I had sent, that I I'd posted and then sent around of watching, it was like one minute of Trump, like basically going to work a room. Right. So he's, he's going in there talking to them and he was like, where'd you get this Acting baseball? like a normal person. Right. Oh, where'd you get this baseball? It's like Walmart. He's like, oh, Walmart. That's great. He didn't make a joke. He didn't need, you know. And then he has another group of people come over and take a picture with him. And then the mother takes a picture with him. And, and, he, and he's smiling and shaking hands and really, like, engaging people in conversation. And, you know, us, demented, are watching this, like, what, when's he going to say something? Like, is he going to say something racist or is he going to say something off color? Be like, hey, nice cans or something like that. And, no, it was a wonderful clip. And I, I posted it. God, was it the beginning of the week? It was a few, it was a few days back. Yeah. I posted it with the caption of, like, no one does it better. Like, literally, like, no one knows how to work a room better than that. And there was a, a thing he signed for a, uh, it was a, a portrait that someone did of a Medal of Honor recipient. And he was like, oh, how is he? When, did, what year was that? And then, oh, yes, he came to the White House and everything. Like, just, like, really asking questions and genuinely interested in people. Versus, you know, again... Someone being like, hi, you know, I'm John Smith. And DeSantis being, okay. And then just moving on to somebody else. Like, you know. It's, I'm sorry. That's in a, if, if you're talking about someone getting elected in a general election, there are three candidates in this race that I've seen genuinely interact with human beings and do a good job at it. And it's obviously Trump. It's Joe Biden. You know? He'll go in and get testy when he's pushed, but he's still like the doddering old grandpa. And RFK, I've seen some clips with him meeting with people, and they've had very good conversations. But you bring up a very good point and a problem with Republicans. We tend to run people. We tend to have Republican politicians tend to be less charismatic. Yes. People are so enamored and and enthralled with charismatic people and they don't care what they say. They don't care that it's, I mean, to her credit, even Kamala, who is batshit crazy and says nothing (laughs) like she literally will have word salad come out of her mouth. But the fact that she seems engaging and she'll, you know, sometimes her laugh is a little bit much, but you know what I'm saying? At least hold a fucking conversation. She knows how to at least engage with people, even though what she's saying is complete bullshit and or nonsensical. The fact is you can listen to her and be like, that sounds like a nice person. Right. So they have, the Democrats have cornered this market on politicians who are charismatic and nice, nice to listen to. This is the interesting thing. So Trump is the, he's the antidote to that. Yeah. But then he has his own problems. But, well, yeah, but again, okay, this is where someone like Pence, someone like um, oh God. Uh, DeSantis, uh, even Nikki Haley and Tim Scott, like all of them have their problems with actually engaging with people. I think of is all it, of them, Tim Scott is probably the most conversational. Have you seen Pence's little jog to the stage he does now? <laughs> he's like <laughs> he's like a little fucking dog. But it leads to a bigger question of: Is it the fact that? Conservatives tend to be more introverted and more like, is there, is there a correlation of personality type of reserved, introverted, um, uh, kind of more awkward and being conservative? Like, I think that's a stereotype. I don't know if it's particular because here's the thing. This is why I want to stereotypes happen for a reason. Right. But this is why I want to pull back. For the longest time, the most charismatic politician in American politics was Ronald Reagan. That is what people want. 
and because people he talk was an about, actor by trade. Right, exactly. And he always had a couple stories at hand, and he was very good with people. Like you see the clips of him interacting with people. The 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 clip I just saw, you know, on Twitter today of like someone like a balloon pops in the audience, and he's like, "Miss me!" Like after he got shot out a couple years earlier. Like that's that's funny shit. <laughs> well, no, but you're playing right into my point of the most memorable and the most lo- beloved. Republican politicians have been the ones that are most charismatic. Yes. So even Nixon was good with people. The, right. The, he the made the one flub of like, you know, looking pale and, and emaciated. Allegedly, in, yes. In, in, in one but of the only debates. Nixon could go to the Nixon could go to the um, Nixon with his valet could go to the Lincoln Memorial at 4 a.m. and talk to like anti-war protester kids and be able to have a conversation with them. It's a little bit stilted, but. The man still won a majority. But so. there have been very few Republican politicians who have been able to work a room and appeal to people in that manner. Right. And we have to realize that that is far and above the most important thing to many voters. I think so. Because it's kind of sad, to be honest, well, because uh, we need to focus on uh, you know someone with... You know, experience and and uh, you you know what I mean by experience, but like someone with the proper uh, values and all of that stuff. That should all be first, but it's not. It's the would I re- would I like to have dinner with this person? Would I like to have a beer with this person? Right. That has always been the narrative throughout. You know, from the the fifties on until now, and it still remains that and. We sort of have lost that, if that makes sense. You're right. And I think that you raise a very interesting point because there's a good side to charisma and there's a bad side to charisma. Mm. The bad side is the people who pay lip service. They're able to shake the hands. Because Hitler was charismatic. He actually wasn't. That guy was fucking autistic. He could work a room. He could work a crowd. That's the point. (laughs) Is that the title of this one? Hitler could really work a room. (laughs) Hitler would have killed the Carolines on Broadway. (laughs) No, the point is he got enough people upset and angry about something because he spoke their language. That is the definition of like being charismatic and being able to talk to people. Well, this is the the thing, though. The, The good and bad sides of charisma. The good side is it reflects the national mood and people feel heard because you have somebody who is listening to them, taking in information and reflecting it back at the existing power structures. That is the good side of charisma. That is where Reagan did well, Bush did well. Bush because, oh, he's just a funny, you know, good old boy and he's like a redneck. And then Trump, obviously, because I think, but the difference is there's a bad side of charisma. In Reagan's administration, a lot of normal working class people fell through the cracks and were never recovered and still aren't. In Bush's administration, a lot of his like, you know, like cowboy yokel stuff and his sort of like sideshow act, you know, covered up for a lot of horrible decisions that were made. With Trump, the charisma, I genuinely think that he is, that Trump genuinely understands the American people better than any other politician. Republican or Democrat. I think he gets them. In fact, there's just a clip that was I was watching on Twitter where way back in the Apprentice days, someone said, oh, you know, because I'm just white trash, whatever. He's like, white trash. And the guy's like, oh, yeah, because I'm from a small town. He's like, I don't like people using that word, especially to describe themselves. You're fired. He literally fired someone off the Apprentice reason. He's like, I wouldn't use that. I wouldn't want someone in my, in my boardroom who uses that to describe themselves or to describe anybody else. I think that that's derogatory. You're out. So I think that he genuinely understands people, especially because people have said he's the poor man's idea of a rich person. Like, you'd have a model wife and a house full of gold. And that's what, you know, I think that he has a way of doing that. But you're right about the last few Republican politicians have been really bad at the charisma thing, and they always lose right in the last minute. And the one before Trump, remember, was Mitt Romney. And let me tell you, he is the worst politician I've ever met. Mitt Romney, John McCain, both of who them. Who was also a very strange and stiff. I don't mean his arm. Right, no. He both was a of them, stiff and, yes. and, and very non conversational person, very easy to throw. Which is like, immediately a yeah. you're not going to win. No. And so that's the last two of the of, of the twenty of the twenty first century. And then before that you have the other ones who lost were okay, Dole, who was a thousand years old when he ran against Clinton. And then what, ninety two? Old man Bush, who had zero charisma. But again, People don't. 
people play too much into the race card. Right. I, race does. I'm sorry. I'm gonna say it again. Race the means N-word? nothing. Oh. Races. Race means. I'm oh, sorry. Race means nothing. And in, in, in today's America, it really doesn't. People always say, oh, Obama beat out Hillary because he was the first black man. Like, bullshit. No. He had charisma. He had this personality that you would like, I would I would like to know this person. Like, yes. I would like to be neighbors with this person. I'd like to talk to this person. No one wants to mention the fact that, No like, one wants to talk to Hillary. No. No sure. one wants to <laughs> sit down and have dinner with Hillary. You might get shanked. Sure, I don't know. Sure, Rod Brown could have beat Hillary in that election. And no one wants to talk about that to the point where Hillary thought the way that I win is Hillary ran a Republican campaign in that election. She was... Pro cracking down on illegal immigration, anti gay marriage. Right. She ran a Republican campaign. And for a brief moment, the conversation was oh, America is more misogynistic than it is racist. For a very brief mm-hmm. moment, because of that, you know, uh, the fact that uh, Obama beat her. Which is very in sad the because nomination. I, I, I knew this writer um, years ago who was a, started out as a local reporter, worked in New Hampshire. Uh, main area like that whole like way up past Massachusetts and had met Hillary during her Senate campaigns and then later during her presidential campaign and said the biggest crime that no one will know is Hillary is actually a very funny nice person who's in on the joke and no one will ever know that because you will only see it if you are one on one with her She is nice and canny and funny and engaging. And if you see her with more than two people in a room, all of that completely shuts down. So, you know, that is something that people don't pay attention to. Because every time you saw Hillary, it was a very awkward real life interaction where she was pouring a beer and it was fucked up and she was like <laughs> pretending to get, remember when she, she cried? had too much head but remember but sh- do you remember in the 2008 primary when Hillary started crying come on that was a good joke God. just run over my <laughs> joke yeah well she didn't she you, didn't you have, wouldn't do well at Caroline's on Broadway I'm sorry Hitler is coming up next you really gotta get a tight five in she, she didn't have enough head in the bedroom she had too much in the beer room she uh, beat uh, uh, Bill up in the bedroom but no one wants to talk anyway, about that no, sorry she threw a lamp go ahead his head. no oh, but, yeah that's the story but you remember in the 2008 election when she was in a booth at a bar and <laughs> it was the first time in that primary that the polls were showing that this you know young black man well half black man was going to like <laughs> surpass her. Right. And she started crying. And she's like, I just don't understand why people don't like, you know, everything. It was the only real moment in that entire campaign because it was like, Oh my God, she's like real. And then she sucked it up and she's like, everything's fine. Which is like the same thing when she, when she, when Hillary passed out on nine 11 and then she got up with the fucking stroke glasses on, like, everything's fine. Everything's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm holding a, you know, I'm holding a bundle of flowers from a kid. Everything's fine. It was so weird. So, I don't know. I just feel like charisma is a double-edged sword. And those, but, but if you're going to be a politician, especially at a national level, and you lack it, you lose. John Kennedy, your favorite senator, <laughs> has charisma by the bucket load. He will yeah. be in that seat until he dies. He's well, like, what? He's like, what, the fourth senator from Louisiana? Like, they all <laughs> are there forever. Like, you know. But I, I want to I wanna play this out to the end because I just realized that I'm, I'm, not, I'm not poking fun at it. I'm not, I'm not diminishing... Um, you know, the want and the need almost for charismatic politicians. But I just realized I myself fall into that. I fall prey to that because I'm enamored and really, really enjoy Marianne Williamson. Well, she is a very smart woman and well-spoken. Well, no, she's very smart and well-spoken, but she has this, she has this air about her that I want to get to know personally. Like I would... I would love to have a drink with her. I'd love yes. to have dinner with her. Something to that effect. Because she's not guarded. She's, she's kooky and all of that stuff. Like, I I think when we get down to it, the uh, looking at the issues, she and I probably disagree on like 90%. Yeah. 
However, I would feel more comfortable with her leading our country rather than Joe Biden because right. I would rather have dinner and a drink with Marianne Williamson and have fun rather than a stiff old twat Qua- <laughs> corpse. Sorry. Okay, but here's the thing with Marianne Williamson. You may disagree with her on 90% of the solutions for the issues. You do not disagree on 90% of the problems. Right. The yes, issues yes, themselves. Yes. Like, so, because I believe she comes from a good place. I think so too. And so I you, don't think she is corrupted. In 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 a Netflix version of America, or in you know some kind of imaginative version of America, a woman who started one of the most successful, you know, well spent charities, and by well spent I mean the least used for administrative fees and most used on actually distributing things for right. the people who ask for them. A woman who started one of the most well spent charities, Project Angel Food, and she started that. That was her. I didn't know that. Yes. That was her. Started Project Angel Food. You remember from Real Housewives. Right. Then why do all these Beverly Hills Housewives not, like, love her? Because they all work with her charity. Same thing. Why did the Kardashians not endorse her last election when she ran for, you know, Senate or something like that? They did. Everyone in Hollywood knows Marianne Williamson because they've either done a charity event for her, they've given money to her, and she has, co- she has on a fundraising level, I think raised more money than just about any individual in the United States on a single fund. Like, she'd throw Leah Black, like, you know, out to the chickens. Like, she has fundraised, I think, maybe in the top five individual fundraisers in the United States for, it started out with patients with AIDS who needed meals, who had no one to take care of them, and were going, and people with chemo and things like that. And then it grew, it's one of the most successful charities ever. So in a just universe. Oh, that's what Angel... Yes. Okay. It was meals That's for AIDS patients, okay. and then and then cancer, know, the and now poverty. So it's covered a lot of things. Okay. But that's her. So you'd think one of the, the the woman who herself started one of the most successful charities ever, you know, done in the modern era, would become president of the United States. You know, talking about how, or at least something, something. a cabinet member, like yes. something, like she's been completely overlooked. And I'm. This is not like the praise her. Because the fact is, I think she she's a good person who wants good things for our country yes. and the people of our country. That is why I can support someone like that. Again, as you said, I don't think that she is right in the ways that we might come, you know, go about because fixing she'll, some here's of this the thing. stuff. Here's the thing. She'll hear something about climate and be like, oh, my God, you know, the climate thing. And she'll get distracted. Right. And that's fine. But there is a... She buys into some of the... Right. science. But there is a boomer liberalism that lives in that category. So they might, you know, veer a little bit off on climate or other things. We're like, okay. But they're right about the societal issues. But you they're also right me, about that. You know me well enough to know that I do not balk at the word liberalism anymore. Mm-hmm. Because it has a very specific meaning. And for all intents and purposes, you and I are liberal. Oh, don't call me that. We are not progressive. I'm only liberal in the sense of the red scared girl. <laughs> I'm no, an Anna and no, Dasha no. liberal. By definition of what is it? Classical liberal, we would fall into that category. The point is Just invite Marshall on it. We are not we are not progressives. The Democratic Party has become so progressive and communistic like Marxist, I guess I should say, it's a better word. Um that they're they're no they're actually no longer liberal. Right. So we use these words conservative liberal in such a very niche. Well, they're and, used and they're used wrong and loosely. They're very they're used very wrong. But okay, let's go through the rest of the the can- because I I think in a very similar category oh. to Marianne Williamson. Sorry, I have something to bring up after you're done. Oh, go ahead, I was going to say yes, yes, go ahead. Robert F Kennedy Jr. is in yeah. a very similar I think you have someone who means very well. Who, by the way, for 70, <laughs> looks pretty fucking good compared to these other old fucks running. Like, he could beat them all in an arm wrestling match. But you know what? With that voice, he wouldn't win. Okay, so... And I, I understand it's not his fault. But I understand. Like, so, today was Rogan episode 1999, number 1999, <laughs> and it was RFK as a surprise guest. I don't know, he popped out of a cake or something. But he comes on... And apparently the voice got better after the first few minutes. So you can still, like, tolerate hearing him. It sounds like you're listening to, you know, one of his uncles through a... I just watched you spit on an ice cube into a glass and onto the floor. That's fascinating. It meant to go in the glass. I know, I saw that because I saw you... I love watching you fuck up. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. That's my favorite hobby. Um, but he was on the, uh, Rogan, and apparently after minute four, like he gets more tolerable. But well, yeah, your ears get adjusted to what they're listening to. But, but he, it's, he, it's he raises jarring. an issue that I think any politician should talk about. He said, in the 60s when I was a kid, 4% of Americans had a chronic disease or illness. Now it's more than half. What happened? And people want to talk about food, and they want to talk about climate, and they want to talk about, you know, pesticides and poisons and, and uh, surgeries and, you know, all those things and everything like that. But no one else wants to talk about that. That seems like a very cogent issue. And so I think with someone like an RFK or a Marianne Williamson or all these people, they bring issues to the forefront where you're like, oh, yeah, that's the things that we should be focusing on. Like, why are we caring about all this nonsense that's outside of the, you know, the realm of what the people that we elect are elected to do? I think that you you see in Marion Williamson, you see in RFK, they remind us of the purpose of a democratic republic, of voting for people, of choosing people who we should have in charge who, you know, make and set the rules and then enforce them for the society that we have. And that's why I think that Trump might be a spiritual liberal, you know, he even in the 2000 Reform Party platform and things like that, he spoke from a more liberal perspective. But I think he is because I think to be a liberal, you have to understand people. To be a conservative, you have to understand humanity. And if you can have a, a foot in both worlds, you're unstoppable. So... I'm going to put you on the spot. Ah. Because I honestly know nothing. So, okay. I've, I've spoken before and previously about how, the, you know, the two-party system, while it seems to be the only thing that we're going to stick with, does not work. And, you know, even Washington himself said, this is not a good idea. He's um, right. Well, because every every other country, every other modernized country in this world has more than two parties. Let's face it. We are the only ones who are completely fucked up. Mm. Um, well, you know what I mean? No, it's true. But we have other parties in this country. They're just not taking, taken seriously. So I know a lot about the Libertarian Party, mm. less now because they've moved a little bit more leftward than I'm willing to be comfortable with. Well, but I little, don't know, now that marijuana has been legalized, they're a little strange. But I don't know anything about the Green Party. Mm. I know nothing about the Green Party. And so it was recently, as in like yesterday, I think, announced that Cornell West, ah, who is a big, Dr. Cornell West, who is a big Fox News contributor or, yes. or talking head, is seeking the nomination from the Green Party. So <laughs> I love him. Tell me what you know about the Green Party because I know nothing, and tell me what you know about Cornell West because all I know is what okay, I've so seen on Fox News. A sometimes. couple things. So the Green Party, you know, it's kind of one of those '60s, '70s inventions where it was environmental right. reasons, and, kind of hippie, yeah. exactly. Kind of you know, like whatever. We're going to be the third party, man. Like we're not part of the system. It became kind of interesting during. Nader's era where I think they got unfairly blamed for spoiling the election against Al Gore and in Bush's favor, even though I think Nader considered himself Reform Party, but, or no, Reform Party is Pat Buchanan, so I guess Nader was the Green Party candidate, someone can look that up. He was a, oh, I was about to say, he, I didn't know he was officially the Green Party candidate. I, I, I don't know. That's the problem. In the minor candidacies, you can... You remember the name more than the party. <laughs> well, that's the thing. And then you have things like where, like, oh, that's the spoiler. That's the person we lost to. Or, or you know, people you meet, oh, I didn't like either of them. I was going to vote for the guy that wasn't the two of them. I vote for Green Party. But in California, you have so many fucking parties. It doesn't matter. But, okay, you have Peace and Freedom, and you have um, there's some like indigenous rights part. There's so many fucking choices. But anyway, so then we're going into the modern era. In 2016, the Green Party was relevant again because... Jill, Dr. Jill Stein was right. the nominee, right. who, again, I think is a person who meant well and who has a good heart and really, you know, you might know less about her. There was a table. I know the name for sure. She was at a dinner in Russia and people were like, oh, she's a Russian agent, which is so stupid. Um, but, okay, so Dr. Jill Stein was the candidate and allegedly lost to Hillary the election to Trump because Democrats are crazy and so they're going to blame anybody else for losing it's not themselves or not going to Wisconsin. Okay. 
And then now, does he have the Green Party candidacy? Because I heard that he announced, but he's running for it. For right. in their primary, what he, he seeks the against the somebody who doesn't have a name or a social security. Probably. But so here's the thing with Dr. Cornell West, um, or maybe he's running out of post because I haven't heard anyone else announce for that party. Maybe. Um, so <laughs> Cornell West, <coughs> crazy, like absolutely crazy, like wild, like looks he has like Don King here. I was gonna say, literally, I was just gonna say, he looks like an alternate world Don King. Right. If Cornell West and Don King got in the same room. And fought it out. You couldn't tell the difference. No. It'd be great. But. It'd be like that Spider-Man meme. It was him. <laughs> it was him. <laughs> Cornell West and Don King. Um, but. <clears throat> I think, unlike a lot of people on the left, is actually intellectually honest. In the same vein of a Malcolm X or a James Baldwin. Or talking about the real problems of the left... And talking about them in a maybe more of a Howard Zinn kind of kind of context, but really, you know, eviscerating the white liberalism that has made the left what it is now. Well, he was a regular <clears throat> on me. MSNBC, right? Well, no, he was yes, but he was a regular on Hannity's show. Oh, which you know is here or neither here or there. But the fact that I saw him at least twice. And this is growing up. So when I, you know, we're talking 15 years ago. I saw him at least twice on Bill O'Reilly. And then I think at least once on Tucker's show. Mm -hmm. So the fact that Bill O'Reilly and or Tucker had him on, had Dr. Cornell West on their shows speaks to the fact that he had something to say. Like Handy will let on anyone. Here's like, the thing. That's, you know, it Here's is what thing. it is. Cornel West is actually very smart. He knows what he's saying, and he has been disregarded by the left now because he said a couple of things that were against the left's orthodoxy. Right. So he's not an idiot. He, he might, went against the religion. It, he did. He really did. So he's become like persona non grata among the left when during... You're canceled. Dude. The 90s through the 2000s. That's Mike Tyson, boy. <laughs> During the 90s to the 2000s, Cornell West was like, oh, but he's Dr. Cornell. The, notice how, we, I want to say this, though. Notice for black intellectuals how they drop the doctor as soon as they cancel them on the Excuse left. me, you don't call me doctor, thank you, and I you, deserve it. You couldn't even, you don't even have hydrogen peroxide in your fucking bathroom. The, I got a cut today and I had to go downstairs. He's a PhD, I'm a PhD, we're doctors. Like, But no, it's the thing. They emphasize Dr. Martin Luther King, they de-emphasize Dr. Cornell West. <laughs> They don't emphasize, you know, Dr. Bill Cosby anymore, but they did when they, when Dr. <laughs> Bill Cosby had something to say worth listening to. So, you know, it, it's something where I, it, it's like the doctor giveth and the doctor taketh away. Um, but you want to make that the title? No, there's a lot of things I can think about <laughs> on this. I like the I like the doctor I like Dr. Cornell West and Don King in the same room. But I. Here's the thing. I always thought he was provocative. He's crazy about things, and he'd be infuriating sometimes. But the man is not a liar, and the man is not stupid. And so, seeing that he's actually running as a nominee, a real leftist should vote for Dr. Cornell West. He represents your values. And if you want to go more in a human rights and climate direction, you have a Marianne Williamson. And if you want to go more in a healthcare and you know. Upend in a two-party system direction, you're going in an RFK junior position. You have the best primary candidates on the left in this election right. than you have had and the, since... They'll never see the light of day. 92, maybe? Like, you, you have more than... The best in at least two generations. That's fascinating. It, but it's sad. It's sad that they're kind of wasting their money. They're wasting their money on an incumbent election. Mm. And maybe they should both have waited. I mean, I guess they both have the money. I don't know. Well, there is a 600-pound elephant in the room. But they should have waited until to what? 2028. No one's waiting. DeSantis should have waited, too, but he didn't listen. He put out that stupid Gator logo. But okay. Speaking of the 600-pound gorilla in the room... Would you call me? (laughs) 
<laughs> that was it. Waking up right out there. There it was. I haven't used that joke in a while. Gavin, Take a shot. Gavin. Oh, not yet. Gavin Newsom. Yes. Gave an interview on Hannity. Yes. I forgot about that. It was apparently very watched. And he said some things about Trump that were relatively complimentary. Right. In fact, he said nothing negative about Trump. I remember someone saying, so I didn't listen to the clip, but I remember someone saying that he thanked Trump for his pandemic response. Yes. And And wildfire response. Yes, and said he was very helpful in getting us the uh, assistance we needed right. in California. Right. And so it's like, okay, now Newsom's been kind of going on a Jeremiah against uh, DeSantis, pitting himself up as the only alternative to, to that. I think that DeSantis' record speaks more for itself and is better than Gavin Newsom's, but I think Gavin Newsom has more capability to win in a general election than a DeSantis does. So... Really? Stuff that in your oh yeah, oh Gavin Newsom could win and could win. So we're looking we're looking election. at twenty twenty eight as being Newsom versus DeSantis. We're looking at two people waiting in the wings now for the seventy plus. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, nearly eighty year olds in their party <laughs> to step aside. You're looking at the next election right away, but looking at the we're ready just in case. Newsom is doing that. What's it? Twenty sixth Amendment um, or twenty fifth? Whatever it is. The, the uh, tw- this this basically it's trying to get people to sign up on a semi gun control amendment, right. whatever. He got. I think it was. I think it's higher than that. But anyway, yeah, a new amendment. To oh, I'm sorry, 28th because I think we're at 27. Uh, anyway, I don't remember? But anyway. yeah, a new amendment to the Constitution a new amendment about, about about gun control about yes. you know basically curtailing the Second Amendment. Stupid, whatever. But he has hundreds of thousands of signups. And now he has an email list with hundreds of thousands of signups. And if he got each of them to donate a dollar, he qualifies for the Democratic nomination. That's a big deal. Because he could probably satisfy that with about five donors. I think he's he's trying to do something, and I don't exactly know what it is. Some people have said, oh, he's going to run with Trump as a running mate. That's weird. But what the no. I know, but that's the same people who said that Trump wanted to run with Caroline Kennedy in 2016 <laughs> as a unity ticket. So it is what it is. But no, the unity ticket I want is Trump and Mary Ann Williamson. God bless. <laughs> She's like, I will not serve with that man. <laughs> and I that? said, girl, oh. you were so off. No, uh, <laughs> the, the clip of her that I love so much. And I, ah, I need to find it on Twitter again. That's enough of that. Stop right there. <laughs> <laughs> and that was used for the for the for the best like all the best reactions to like <laughs> me grabbing a fifth drink. That's enough of that. Stop right <laughs> or there. Or like someone someone's posting hole on the timeline again. That's enough of that. Stop right there. <laughs> it was great. I love her. Marion Williamson is such an icon. Well. But she needs to be something. Not president. Maybe something. I don't know. Um, is there, are there any more people who've announced? I don't, um... Okay, so I want to talk about this. Oh, Jesus. There's a older gentleman. Is he single? He's in his 70s. (laughs) Is he single? I think his wife died. So you're saying yes, there's a chance? (laughs) His name is Perry Johnson. Who? And he is running for president. On the Republican ticket. Are you making shit up again? I shit you not. He has a show on Newsmax. (sighs) Where it's Perry Johnson. He has a reality show called Backstage with Perry Johnson. Or it should be like Backdoor with Perry Johnson. And he's trying to win. Look at this. Do you think I'm full of shit? Well, you normally are, so I'm a little dubious here. Let me see. Oh, God. He sat there and talked to Rudy Giuliani. He has a, quote, reality show, end quote, on Newsmax. Oh, God. I don't want to see that. I know. (laughs) He's showing me nasty pictures. No. (laughs) That's close enough. It's a man with a spray tan, a comb over, and the whitest teeth you'll ever see. 
He apparently implemented... And apparently dentures. Yes. He's in the 70s. He apparently implemented quality standards in the building of automobiles and created a quality Uh. standard himself. So he has more money than he knows what to do with because of this. He tried to run for Michigan Senate or something like that and didn't make the ballot. But now he is the other candidate that nobody talks about. What, the thing with him and Rudy Giuliani? No. That's really upsetting. It's, it's like Jello Night at the home. Well, no, I did see that. But as he says in his bio on Twitter, number three among contenders, according to CPAC straw poll. <laughs> what, what poll is, <laughs> no one has ever heard of you? I'm sorry. You and I could make number three on the CPAC straw poll. Rick Santorum is still number three on the CPAC straw poll, and he looks like hell. Marianne Williams could Williams could make number three on the Republican <laughs> CPAC, CPAC straw, straw, straw poll. poll. So that's Perry Johnson, but he is running. I thought he was making shit up again. No, he's not. Okay, so on the businessman scale, you have two people who saw Trump running and were like, "I'm a businessman, I can run," which is always dangerous. You have Vivek. Ramaswamy Ding Dong and Perry Johnson, like Vivek's like 20. I don't think he's old enough to run. <laughs> Perry is in his 70s as well. So they both have the, the different ages represented from the businessman standpoint. They're all racing for that 1% that hopefully Trump notices them and appoints them like ambassador to France or something um, when he gets a nomination. But that's this is this is the problem. These are the contenders you have on the Republican side. Not serious. I mean, accomplished people, but in a very narrow standpoint. Not serious and not charismatic. Versus Dr. Cornell West, Marion Williamson, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. You have real fucking people running on the Democratic side for, you know, the primary. If, by the way, RFK is polling near Biden in some of the early primary states. I, I'm going to go on record and say that if if RFK or if Marion Williamson were to get a nomination, I think they could probably beat Trump. <laughs> I think that Marion Williamson would come close. I think as it stands today, and I would, I'll say this, I'll say it, okay. The only person on the Democratic side in 2024 who can beat Trump is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Unless Biden does. I said what I said. (laughs) I said what I said. What you said was some bullshit. (laughs) (laughs) I said it, and I'm going to say it again. No one's ever teed me up like that. Thank you so much. That made my day. I do what I can. But I think that's where we're at. And if they're smart, they'll nominate him. They're not smart. They probably won't. But still. If that's where we're at, everyone should go fuck themselves. Oh!